Hello and welcome to the Saintly Sounder, your source for FIFA tips, playthroughs, reviews, and everything FIFA. Today's video is the second episode in the original series Saints Till I Die. This episode is titled The Sweat Strikes Back. Just a recap of the rules for Saints Till I Die. All players must be past or present Southampton FC players, and all games must be in one continuous Division 1 season. After a successful first two games, I decided not to change the squad for Game 3. In case you need it reminding, Inform Shane Long up top, Wanayama at holding mid, Jay Rodriguez at left, and Theo Walcott on the right. I don't want to talk too much about this game, but all you need to know is that Tevez strike ended up being the decider. He brought out all the sweaty players, and it wasn't your cheap players either. He had Ronaldo, he had the Neymars, he had Sanchez, and then he had the nerve to bring on Tevez and Barbo at halftime. It was absolutely ridiculous. He had no interest in playing anything that resembled real soccer. All he did was try to sweat it up the field and hope that Ronaldo could carry him to the win. And of course, FIFA being FIFA, he got a horrible penalty decision when Nate Klein decides to bungle over Ronaldo in the box in the first half. We did fight valiantly, but there's not too much you can do against this kind of team when your opponent is determined to be the biggest asshole he can. There he takes it into the corner and effectively ices the game. As you can see, I threw the kitchen sink at it, but ultimately, Ibarbo, Tevez, and Ronaldo were too much. I mean, look at the possession stats, 62% possession, but ultimately, two of his three shots on target went in. Again, the Ronaldo, Ibarbo, Tevez, Neymar team. What a dick. Although we did lose, we did dominate possession, and we had more shots on target, which I guess I can take comfort in. Anyway... On to the second game. Wholesale changes will be in order for game four. Mayuka comes up top. Lalanes gets slotted into the center attacking mid position. And Sadio Mana replaces an ineffectual J. Rodriguez. In case you haven't noticed, I switched to a 4 1 2 1 2 to test out how that might work to and to better utilize most of the pace in my squad. To be fair, my opponent for Game 4 trotted out a pretty original team, although Marquisio at holding mid does seem kind of odd to me. We pick up the game in the 19th minute, down 1-0 after his Rain Rooney scored a pretty decent goal to start the game. I connect close to a dozen passes here, mostly all one touch, before finding Walcott in acres of space down the wing. The subsequent corners where we would get the equalizer. Here across from Nate Klein finds the head of Inform Waniyama, who rises above everyone to put the ball neatly in the back of the net. Celebration is a little long and unnecessary, but at this point, after game three, I really needed to let out some frustration. As you can see, Waniyama getting that big Kenyan head on it and putting it away for his second goal in three games. We pick it up in the 35th minute where Adam Lalana manages to make a nifty little tackle here around midfield, and then he spearheads the counterattack. After not jumping for this aerial ball and letting it run over his head, he gains possession, does a fake shot with his excellent dribbling, takes a decent finesse shot, forcing the keeper into a save. This game was certainly end-to-end. -end. It was about 50-50 for both of us. As you can see, I was forced to defend fairly deep down the field. He was incredibly dangerous with Kunaguero and Wayne Rooney, which I normally don't see too much out of Wayne Rooney in games, but his squad name was the Rooney squad, and he did not disappoint. However, it is in these scrappy games that the scrappier players rise to the occasion. As you can see, a little bit of a foul he shakes off with Marquisio before Wanayama just comes across the field, clears out Juan Mata. Shane Long makes a nice little turn there, and Mayuka finds Walcott down the wing. He's always going to whip it in. He does. The big Irishman, Shane Long, finds a way to put his head on it, and we take a 2-1 lead in the 45th minute. 
This goal had post patch written all over it. Shane Long looks like he's been completely marked out here, but he, Walcott's cross finds a way to get to him, and then he uses his actually fairly decent heading accuracy, jumping and strength to put it in the back of the net. So I'm thinking I'm going to get into halftime with a 2-1 lead, but five minutes of extra time, which seems to be the norm for this FIFA, gets put on the board. And as you can see, my opponent does not give up up. A combination of sloppy play on my part and a high pressing style from him means that I was bound to make an error unless I had time to calm down. Unfortunately, he never gave me that time. As you can see here, a pass gets picked off in the midfield and he's on the counter. He smartly holds up play a little bit, letting all his players get into position before Juan Mata and Aguero connect on this absolute beauty of a ball. At this point, it was heartbreaking for me. As you can see, he's letting the crowd know, A, I can't hear you anymore. And that would just about be all she wrote in the first half. We would go into halftime 2-2 with him having, as you can see, a majority of the possession. OneDrive would freak out and not record most of the second half. However, you do get to see Jay Rodriguez clinching the game winner by simply following up his own shot. For those of you wondering how Jay Rodriguez ended up being even on the field, I ended up subbing out Emmanuel Mayuka for him and putting him in at striker. Remember, again, subs come on as team chemistry, so Jay Rodriguez was playing on 10 chemistry at the time. Also worth noting is that that was the third time in four games that the game winner has been scored by an impact sub. Although it may sound like I'm beating a dead horse, you should always be making substitutions in this game. Contract cards don't cost a lot, and winning games not only boost your confidence, but it also move you up in divisions. The last 15 minutes were certainly anticlimactic. Neither of us were able to mount a serious charge at our opposing goalkeeper, and the game would ultimately end 3-2. The big shout-out in this game goes to Victor Wanayama, who's on the ball right now, plays a nice little ball before getting up the field. He was everywhere. Although he was a little too high for my liking for someone with medium-high work rates, he was the standout performer of Game 4. And as the final whistle blows at St. Mary's at 3-2, we go into Game 5 with a 3-0-1 record. The game would give Theo Walcott the man of the match, which I can't argue too much about, as he certainly was massive on that right wing slot. Ultimately, this was another scratch and claw win. As you can see, possession ended 50-50, and shots were also even. Just some quick notes, our record now stands at 3-0-1 in Division 1 with this team. I did buy Inform Tadic, Lambert, and Pella, but I'm not quite sure how and if to work them into the team. The formation change really suited Walcott as he was bombing up and down the wings all game. Inform Shane Long continues to be an enigma as he disappears for long portions of the game before nodding in goals. We are also passing surprisingly well. In the run-up to the first goal, we connected something like a dozen to 15 passes, which is absolutely brilliant. And that concludes episode 2 of Saints Till I Die with the Saintly Sounder. If you found this at all interesting, helpful, insightful, new and different, like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at TheRedDeath329. Thanks!